305-636. Thank you uh, for wanting to start this dialogue. And I have attempted to study uh, your words and, uh, you know, basically understand um, what you are saying to me. Uh, so, um, if, if I'm correct, I think <laughs> you are saying to me that I need to stop talking about racism and start talking about ways to solve our problems. Basically present some solutions. So, okay. <clears throat> I will start by uh, reading, you know, just telling what, you know, one from the book again. It is the United Independent Compensatory Code System Concept, which is a textbook workbook for thought, speech, and or action for victims of racism, white supremacy. The code says, and I agree with it, that all non-white people are victims of racism, okay? And we are not victims of racism based on individual acts that may or may not be racism. We are victims of racism because we are born into a situation of racism. See, for the simple fact that I was born and it was communicated to me that I'm black when I'm brown is racist. For it to be communicated to me that I am a part of a race. When the racist created the term race and the racist labeled me as being black is maintaining racism. Song Wee Cho is a non-white person or was a non-white person. He was a victim of racism. He got to a point, you know, I, I imagine probably when he was small and he came to America, he probably had high hopes. You know, you, you know how America can do that, you know. The idea that America is a democracy and we fight for freedom and justice. That's what America is all about. You know, that whole idea is being communicated all around the world. Okay? And so, for some non-white people to come here, and then of all places in this so-called country to go to Virginia, and you and I, and most non-white people know what a place like Virginia is for a victim of racism. We know what Virginia's like. Now, him going there as a child, experiencing what he experienced and growing up, he experienced racism. And just got to a point basically where he couldn't take it anymore. See, the system of white supremacy causes us to be depressed. It causes us to have mental health issues, mental health problems. Real ones. I mean, that's the truth. That is the reason why you can go into any black neighborhood, so called neighborhood, you know, the code says we should call them Sowetos. Okay, when you go to a Soweto or so-called ghetto or so-called neighborhood, you can see liquor stores on every corner. You might be able to walk within a two mile radius and count like 15 to 20 liquor stores or churches. Why? Because our people are suffering 
from depression. And we have been, you know, we are conditioned to, you know, you know, we, we want to relieve ourselves of this depression. So we drink, we do drugs, or we go to church, we seek some kind of spiritual relief or some kind of, you know, self-medication to relieve us of the pain and suffering that we feel on a day-to-day -day basis in all areas of activity, economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. What most of us spend all of our time trying to do is cover for that. We spend most of our time trying to buy trinkets, tri trinkets or you know, material items and, and show off and, and, and try to be cool, you know, and try to make one another believe that uh, we're doing better than the other. That's what we try to do, okay? So now, the code, all right? 335 pages of suggestions, okay? And <clears throat> let me just read some parts of it. See, and I want to say too that, well, I'll just read it, okay? Racism, a basic perspective. The matter sometimes referred to as the race problem is the basic initial unfinished business among the people of the known universe. Therefore, it is not possible to effectively speak and or act to eliminate any major problem that involves people without first eliminating the problem of racism in all areas of activity. Economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. In order to do this, it's necessary for victims of racism, non-white people, in effective numbers to know and understand who the racists are, how they function, and for what ultimate purpose. The victims of racism must also know and understand how the power of the racists to practice racism can be nullified and or eliminated by victims of racism speaking and or acting as individual persons. Okay? Solving problems. We have lots of problems that need to be solved. Okay? And <clears throat> fortunately, we have had lots of people amongst us who have come up with suggestions, um, you know, uh, uh, solutions to solve our problems. But we don't have effective numbers of us working, that is, laboring, or thinking, speaking, and acting to solve such problems. We don't have that. Okay? Um, now, what I'm trying to do with my videos is produce effective numbers of non-white people who can effectively speak and or act as individual persons. Because we're living in a time where, I mean, uh, as far as, I mean, if you just look historically at uh, our people and our attempts at trying to solve our problems, the racists have always stopped us, okay, from solving our own problems. Marcus Garvey tried to do it. They kicked him out the country, okay? Malcolm X tried to do it. They killed him. Martin Luther King tried to do it. They killed him. There's many others who basically did the research but did not try to do a movement. Now see, the ones who tried to do a movement, they, they did what they did to them, they killed them. Okay? Now, uh, <clears throat> the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Nation of Islam was just simply infiltrated by the COINTELPRO program. The Black Panther Party was simply infiltrated by the COINTELPRO program. Okay? But these are organizations way that YouTube has of just, uh, you know, quick capture. So, okay. Um, So-called organizations of, of non-white people that have tried to um, um, solve the problems that, that the system of white supremacy is causing us. 
uh, you know, is, is putting on us. It's, it's, you know, so, so these organizations were wiped out, okay, or, or, or weakened by the racists who work within different institutions, whether it's a government institution or a corporation or uh, uh, whatever kind of entity, we have to get past the idea that uh, it's a corporation that's doing, that's committing the racism, or it's a government that's committing the, the racism, okay? It's the individuals in those corporations and in those governments that are committing the racism. So we gotta find out who they are. Otherwise, our problems will not get solved. Most of our problems will not get solved, okay? There are some though. Now, problem solving comes from asking questions, okay? This book prompts us to ask a lot of questions that we've never uh, uh, thought of asking before. You know, like what is a race? Look up the word race. Keep researching it till you've gotten a whole lot of different perspectives on what exactly a race is. Don't take it for what you've been taught it is. Because that's what most of us believe. Most of us have been taught. We've just been, you know, it. you're a part of a race. You're black. That, that's what we we just accepted. We didn't question it. Start questioning. Okay? Everything. That's going to help solve some problems. Okay? Now, in this book, one of the suggestions that uh, can help us solve some of the immediate problems that we have amongst us is called the, uh, the 10 basic stops that victims of racism should practice in speech and or action, okay? And I can't, I'm not going to read them all to you because I, I tried reading them all to you earlier and I got, I have a video that I've talked and said a lot of things in it, but that joke is 57 minutes long, okay? YouTube is just not going to let me do it. And it's a lot of work trying to put, you know, videos up in pieces, okay? So, um, <clears throat> the summary of, of the 10 basic stops, okay, says in order to help eliminate racism and to produce justice, all victims of racism should in all of their relationships with each other think, speak, and act in support of the following three word suggestion. Minimize the conflict, okay? Minimize the conflict. If we can work to minimize the conflict amongst ourselves, then we can solve the problems, okay? A lot of them. Now, the, there's 10 of them. I'm only going to read one, okay, which I feel is, is really good, okay, it's uh, number six, it says stop stealing, to steal from any person for any reason is to promote injustice, to steal even to survive is to promote injustice, to steal even from one who has stolen from you is to promote injustice, to steal even from any, from an enemy is to promote injustice, to steal even from a racist is to promote injustice. Stealing causes a person to put a greater value on the thing stolen than on the value of justice. Also, once a person starts stealing, he or she develops a tendency to continue to do so. In a world social material system dominated by white supremacists, all people are encouraged to steal or to condone stealing by some people under some condition. Those white people who practice White supremacy racism have stolen more things from people and have stolen more people from themselves than any other category of people in the known universe. Under white supremacy, stealing is particularly condoned if it is done through the very skillful use of deceit. If a person can steal from another by gaining his or her confidence and or by skillful trickery, it is oftentimes considered to be not stealing, but the so-called gain of so-called living. When stealing helps to maintain, expand, and or refine the practice of white supremacy, it is not generally considered to be stealing. It is oftentimes called progress. The system of white supremacy functions in such manner that non-white people are not only expected to steal, but are also encouraged to steal. They are trained, bribed, and or enticed from the time that they are small infants. 
They are taught to want many things that will deliberately be made difficult for them to obtain. After being encouraged to want certain things, they are then denied the means of acquiring them without robbing, stealing, and or killing in order to get them to. Uh, they are, in many instances, very deceptively encouraged to want many things that are of no, no constructive value, things that they do not need, and that no person can use constructively in a manner that is generally considered acceptable. Racists oftentimes ridicule their subjects because they do not have or do not want to have many things that the racists say that a subject should strive to get. The racists say that their subjects, non white people, are backward if they do not want and strive to get all of the things that racists say that a subject should have. The racists then proceed to encourage their subjects to develop a desire for those things. Once the subjects develop the desire, the racists act deliberately to directly or indirectly discourage the subject from getting the things desired by any means other than stealing, robbing, and or killing. The racists then act to punish their subjects because of the manner that they, the subjects, use to acquire the things that they were trained to desire. Under white supremacy racism, non-white people are directly or indirectly encouraged to steal those things that are of use for a relatively short period. All things considered, it is better that no person steal from or rob anyone at any time for any reason. It is better for a non-white person as long as he or she is subject to white supremacy to beg for his or her needs than to steal anything at any time for any reason. This is one of the best ways to start to produce justice and to show how nothing is important without it. Okay, I'm reading that fast because um, I only got so many seconds on this thing and I just didn't want it to cut off for me. But um, that is stop number six, which is stop stealing. There's 10 stops, um, um, you know, well, if it cuts off on me, I just have to read, come back and read the other stops, you know, but there's 335 pages worth of suggestions here, and I usually don't have enough time to read everything. I've tried it before, and, you know, YouTube just doesn't have enough, or doesn't allow me to have enough space. To, to do that so the best thing for me to do is to tell you people uh, to get the book you buy the book yourself get a hold of it and then you'll be able to look at it yourself okay but stop snitching stop name calling uh, stop cursing stop gossiping stop being discourteous stop stealing stop robbing um, stop fighting uh, stop killing and stop squabbling, squabbling amongst yourselves and asking racist white supremacists to settle it. Okay? Those, I mean, there's plenty of details that go along with that. Okay? But, um, I just gotta figure out a better way to communicate this stuff to y'all effectively <clears throat> in the shortest amount of time. Um, you know, I, what I may start doing is probably putting this stuff on DVD or something. You know, and maybe you can get that until you get the code. I don't know. A lot of our people don't like to read. We prefer to watch or hear what other people say, which is okay. As long as the person that's saying it, uh, like me, can try, you know, can communicate it effectively, which sometimes I'm not sure I'm doing. Okay? So, um, I hoped, I, I hope that I've proven to you or shown you that this book has some solutions. Okay, the other thing too is you have to watch all of my videos. I know I got 90 some videos, but a lot of those videos I have offered some solutions, okay, to some of our problems. But we need effective numbers to do it. Stay strong in the struggle.